What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteNext.com. Today we're talking about the best exercises you can do for your triceps. But the catch is, as we've done in this entire series, we're restricting our selections to those that you can do with just this, dumbbells. Now look, we're not talking sacrifices here, because the gains you can make with dumbbells are just as good as anything else if you choose the right exercises. But that being said, what type of gains are we talking about? Because there's a lot of things we can be training for. So I want to give you guys the best selections for developing strength, Power, hypertrophy with eccentric stress as the overload, a metabolic exercise combination to drive hypertrophy as well, a total body combination, which, yeah, they actually do exist when it comes to triceps, the corrective exercise, since I can never completely separate the physical therapist from the strength coach, and then finally, our miscellaneous exercise, which means something that doesn't really fit cleanly into another category. And in this case, when it comes to the triceps, an exercise that allows a maximum shortening or a maximum contraction of the triceps, because there aren't that many when it comes to dumbbells. So you guys ready? We're going to break them down here, category by category. All right, guys, we kick this one off in the category of strength. And when it comes to building strength, you want to look for the exercises that allow you to load up with as much weight as possible as often as possible. So you have to have some capacity in the lift that you're doing. And in the case of the triceps here, if I had access to a barbell, I'd run right over to perform the close grip bench press, because we know that's the heavy hitter. But we also have a secondary one, one that sort of ties, and that is the upright dip. Simply changing the orientation of your body from more oriented forward, which would hit more of the chest, as a vertical push-up, to one more upright, which places more of the demand on the elbows, which is going to impact the triceps and make that another heavy hitter, especially because we know we can weight the exercise. So let's actually start in reverse. If we chose the weighted exercise there, we could easily make this a dumbbell swap out because we don't have to sacrifice the weight. As a matter of fact, instead of just using plates, you just strap a dumbbell up like I'm showing you here. You could even do the equivalent weight and there's no drop off. You can get all the gains from this exercise that you would with normally loading it with plates. The fact is, there are a couple things you want to focus on, not just staying more upright, as you can see here, placing more of the stress on the triceps, but I also like to finish by opening my hands and finishing through extension at the wrist to just take the forearms out of it and place more of that stress on the triceps. But we go back to the barbell close grip bench press. Now, if you guys haven't already watched the chest edition in this series, you're going to want to see that because a similar selection was made. We had to decide whether or not it was just as good to go to a dumbbell version of a bench press to take the barbell out of it. And in that case, it actually wasn't so good because of the high demands of stability on the shoulders when you make that drop off. I made the point that 300 pound bench pressers do not become 150 pound dumbbell bench pressers. But the interesting thing when it comes to the close grip bench press is there's a lot less of a significance in the trade off because of the positioning of the elbows and what it namely does to the shoulders. When the elbows are out here, the stability demands on the shoulders are much greater than they are when the elbows come down and in for the close grip setup. In fact, it's one and a half times less torque and stress on the shoulders and the muscles around the shoulder girdle to support that. So you'll find that when you go to make the swap to the dumbbells, you actually don't have to sacrifice very much of weight at all, which continues to make this a viable exercise selection here when you're trying to build strength without having to try to use light weights to accomplish that goal. So guys, you have two options here. I'm going to keep them tied. You pick. All right, next up we move on to power. And as we've discussed here before, when you're training for power, it's not just about trying to use exercises that allow you to move some weight, but more importantly, to move them quickly. There's a velocity component here. So you want to be explosive when you perform the exercise. And in that case, my best selection here is the dumbbell jam press. Now this is a modification of an exercise created by Jam Blakely where we use a barbell traditionally, but again, I don't feel there's a significant drop off in doing it this way. The goal here is that we want to try to be explosive. We want to try to move this weight with some speed. So we select a weight that is heavy enough but still commandable for us to actually move in space. That initiation of the movement driven by the elbows and actually the shoulder joint itself is allowing an object in motion to stay in motion. Right, we're getting the inertia overcome by the movement of the elbows, not necessarily by the triceps. But once we get going, the triceps can mechanically take advantage and kick in and really accelerate that weight. But I have another option too. I have two ties here to start off this video. The fact is, as I pointed out in other videos, ideally when you're trying to train for power, if you can explode your body or the weight through the concentric with no deceleration component, because even in the jam press, at some point you're decelerating the dumbbells as they reach full extension to protect the elbows. We wouldn't have to do that if we set up here like this in a bodyweight plyo diamond cutter push-up. 
And the idea here is there is no limitation. You're pushing concentrically through the ground as explosively as possible, and the only thing that would stop you is the roof. And I don't think you're gonna be able to push off the ground that hard to get there. As always with power here, guys, you wanna train some fatigue, so take a series of repetitions here and stop them about three or four reps short, and the same thing would happen and apply with the JM press. All right, guys, we move on now to hypertrophy. And while we know that strengthening your muscles is a great way to create gains, we also know that those gains can potentially dry up because progressively overloading an exercise can actually hit a wall rather quickly. So you need some other weapons in your arsenal. And one of the best ways to do this is with the eccentric overload of the muscle you're trying to grow. And we can actually do that great here with the lying dumbbell tricep extension. This is one of my favorite exercises, period. Why? Because we can get an enormous stretch on the triceps because of the positioning of the exercise. I'm able to lay down and get my arms up and over my head. And why is that so significant? Because we can place the stretch on the largest portion of the triceps, that being the long head, in the bottom of this exercise. Now don't make the mistake that a lot of people do, and that is they bring the dumbbells all the way up until their arms are straight up over their body you actually lose a lot of the tension applied to the triceps by doing that. Always keep them slightly angled backwards throughout the entire exercise. But here's where it gets even better. When you reach failure, we know that another way to elicit hypertrophy and muscle gain is to train through failure. Increase the intensity of your work. Go until you can't do any more reps of the lying extension concentrically, and now just drop the elbows and then flare them out to your sides to position yourself really at the beginning of a dumbbell bench press. So now we can call on the chest and shoulders to help us get those dumbbells back up to the top, and then eccentrically control the weight on the way down. You're looking to perform as many eccentric only reps as possible, and the only way you're gonna be able to get these dumbbells back to the top is by calling on and utilizing the help of those other muscles. All right, while we know that eccentric and progressive overload are two ways to build muscle, we always know we have a third, and that option is actually one that utilizes a lot less weight. Matter of fact, it could be using your, just your body weight as it is in this example, and this is our combination of our floor dip into our close grip dumbbell push-up. Now, the dumbbells are actually props in this case. They're allowing us to maintain a neutral wrist positioning while we perform the first exercise in this combination, which is a floor dip. The most important part of this exercise is that we're getting our arm back behind our body to allow for a full contraction of the long head of the triceps. Perform 10 reps of this and immediately jump our body through to a close grip dumbbell push-up. Again, the wrist positioning is what's key here and being afforded to us by the use of the dumbbells. And we do another 10 repetitions here. Now we hop our body through and we keep going down. This is the descending ladder, ideally going nine, eight, seven, six all the way down, but if fatigue is cutting you that short to the point where you can't do anything anymore, you have two options. Number one, you can go and perform that in even numbers only, 10, eight, six, four, two, or ideally you'll just mechanically lighten the exercise by dropping down to your knees in the push-ups or placing your knees in a bent position with your feet flat on the floor to perform the dip. The idea is, guys, metabolically, in order to achieve what you're trying to achieve, you have to be willing to go and fight through every single repetition once the burn starts. It's not about just getting to that burn. If you wanna achieve the gains from metabolically stressed exercises, you need to be able to push through that burn as long and as hard as possible. This combination will allow you to do just that. All right, moving on now, we have our total body exercise for our triceps. And that probably sounds like an oxymoron, but it's true. We actually have a way that we can train our entire body and make the triceps be a driver of the movement. And that is with this overhead extension thruster. Now you've probably tried the traditional thruster before, and you know that this exercise, while incorporating a heavy dose of the lower body, is being driven at the top of the movement by the strength and power of the shoulders. But we can extend the arms up overhead in a different way. We can let the triceps be the driver by getting our elbows out in front of our body. The additional benefit that comes from this exercise is it's going to demand proper thoracic extension, just like it would at the top of an overhead dumbbell squat. So you're kind of getting an additional benefit here that could fall more to the corrective, but I've got an exercise selected for that as well. Speaking of that corrective, we need to know that the tricep doesn't just do this. It doesn't just extend the elbow. As a matter of fact, our appreciation for how significant this muscle is will grow as soon as we know that it actually has an attachment that goes across the shoulder onto the scapula itself, which is the long head, which is actually the largest component of the triceps muscle. And why is that significant? Because it opens up a whole new world of exercises that we can do to help it perform better at the job of stabilizing that scapula or getting your arm back into extension behind your body. So what we have here is the dumbbell devil. 
And that might ring a bell because you probably heard me talk about an exercise called the angels and devils. And we know that the angel comes all the way up to the top, but we don't need to do that if we're really trying to focus the intent of this movement on the triceps. We only need to go about halfway. And you can see me laying down on my belly here and then getting the dumbbells off the floor. And for some people, that might be really, really difficult alone. Just getting that isolated extension behind the body, getting that arm lifted up. But you won't be able to necessarily handle very much weight here at all if you don't learn to incorporate the other muscles that attach to the shoulder blade too and have actions on it and therefore integrating muscles that prefer to work together. So we always try to do here when we can. And we can do that with this devil exercise. We get the rhomboids to participate. We get the rotator cuff to actually externally rotate the shoulder to get up in position, to get those shoulders off the mat and to keep them off as we go through this arc. Again, you won't be able to use a heavy weight here, but that's not the purpose. This is a corrective exercise meant to integrate that triceps with those other surrounding muscles of the shoulder girdle for an all-important purpose and oftentimes an underutilized one. And last, we wrap up our selections here with our miscellaneous category and specifically what we're trying to achieve that we maybe didn't achieve as much in the other selections. And that is getting full extension and contraction, maximal shortening of the triceps. And you might be thinking to yourself, how do we not do that? Well, any of the exercises that end with your arms out in front of your body are not doing that. The only way to achieve this is by getting that arm, as we just talked about, back behind your body into extension to get full shortening of the long head of the triceps. And here's an exercise that gets kicked to the curve far too often and is one of my favorite ways of doing this and it's the dumbbell tricep kickback. The most important thing you can do is establish your arm in the beginning of the movement back behind your body and then try to fight and keep it there on every single repetition. Look, I know as you start to fatigue, those arms are going to start to drift down and down and down and want to start working their way towards the front of your body. But at that point, you're going to lose one of the main benefits of what we're trying to achieve here. Similar to getting full adduction of the chest by crossing midline, you got to keep that arm up as high as possible. It might mean using lighter weights. That's okay. We're generally not that strong in that finished position anyway, but it doesn't mean that we should ignore it. You want to find an option and a way to do that, and this is my favorite way and the best way to do it. So there you have it guys, my best dumbbell exercises when it comes to developing your triceps. And remember, it's not always about just trying to build strength or just trying to build size. It depends upon what you're trying to train for that will dictate the exercise selections that you choose. And that same level of applying science to the selection of what we do is what we do in all of our programs. If you haven't already done so guys, head to athletics.com right now and get the program that best matches up to your current goals. In the meantime, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe, turn on your notifications, and as always guys, make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what you want me to cover and I will do my best to do that for you guys in the days and weeks ahead. All right, see you soon.